I'm mad about good books. Can't get my fill. Budding authors have always been told write about what you know. That seems particularly canny advice now, when an imaginative leap into unfamiliar territory can land a writer in trouble for misrepresentation or stereotyping. Some readers and critics are alert to any real or perceived failures of authenticity in areas including race, gender and sexuality. So publishers and writers are turning to so-called sensitivity readers who scan texts before publication on the lookout for any missteps that might jar or give offence. One author of books for young adults told us she used sensitivity readers when she created characters with deafness and selective mutism. I have a friend who is deaf and I knew, also knew somebody who was a British Sign Language interpreter. So they both individually read it and then came back to me with their notes and then we discussed it together. It was to make sure that I was representing, in this case deafness, as authentically and truthfully as possible to make sure that it, for people who have experience of it, that they would be able to recognise the way I was portraying it. But is there a danger that writers and readers could become oversensitive, that difficult material will simply be avoided for fear of giving offence? And sensitivities vary, of course. Even just about everyone's favourite boy wizard managed to upset some over so-called occult themes in the Harry Potter books. Right now, young adult readers seem to be more alive to issues of sensitivity than the general book-buying public. Yes, um, I think very much so, um, especially with social media, um, allowing people to have much more of a voice than maybe they would have done before and in larger numbers. Um, I think it's definitely something that I as a YA author and, and friends of mine who are YA authors are very aware of. As more authors take advice from sensitivity readers, some bookworms may be in for a more stress-free experience. But will that really make for a happy ending? Stephen Smith there will join me now uh, is author Laura Moriarty, who worked with sensitivity readers on her novel American Heart. She's in Kansas. And with me in the studio is publisher Charmaine Lovegrove, who heads uh, the London-based Dialogue Books. Very good evening to you. Um, Laura, just give us your experience, because you had a rather sort of curious experience. You worked with the sensitivity readers, um, and it was a book with Muslim theme, and then actually there was still quite a lot of anger at the book anyway, wasn't there? Exactly. Um, I, uh, before, uh, as I was writing the book, I actually instinctively did it on my own. I um, asked a Muslim American friend to read the book, and I asked um, some Persian American friends to read the book. And then I also even sent the manuscript to a friend of a friend in Iran, and she emailed me back her thoughts about the book. I wanted to make sure it was authentic and accurate, my depictions of Muslims and Iranians, as well as, well as Iranian Americans. Um, and then once I sold the book to Harper, um, they also hired sensitivity readers to go through the book again. Um, and I think what's interesting is for me, um, you know, I didn't mind when Harper said they wanted sensitivity readers to go over it again. Um, if I think of it as accuracy readers, if I think about someone who has an experience who's going to look at my work and just make sure that I'm being accurate um, and thoughtful about how I depict groups, that's fine with me. I think the, the biggest, um, I think, misperception is that uh, the writer is forced to take every suggestion that the sensitivity reader makes, which wasn't the case for me. Um, but I just because want to I get, didn't. sorry, Laura, I just want to get to, because what happened was the book, you basically agreed it with the sensitivity readers and the publisher, and then there was a lot of upset that the, the saviour of the yeah. book of the Muslims was a, was a white woman and it was more her story than theirs. Right. Um, the, there were people who were upset when uh, just the description of the book came out that the narrator and the protagonist of the novel is a white, non-Muslim girl. Yeah. And she meets them, and she's she's very bigoted at the beginning of the book, and then meets someone and decides to help her. She lives in this; she's grown up in this extremely xenophobic right. uh, United States, um, even even more so than the one perhaps we live in now. And um, she overcomes her prejudice, her bigotry, by actually meeting a human being who is Muslim. Okay. And 
Let me just get, let me get uh, Charmaine's re reaction to that. What do you make of that particular okay. story? Because it's a bit, it, you know, the book was kind of got through the sensitivity thing and then there was outrage. I mean, I, uh, I, mean, I just think the question overall is why we need sensitivity yeah. writers, because who is writing the stories? Who is being given the platform to write the stories from a perspective of the other? And so it seems like a formidable amount of people that were involved to make sure that something was correct. And from my perspective, if we had the people employed in the first place, within the publishing houses, within, um, if we, we you know, it, to me, it seems so like the confidence right. from the publisher is where, where this seems to have gone seems to have gone wrong. But I also question the idea of anyone being able to write anything from any perspective and not really sort of the idea of a white saviour with a Muslim, you know, that is, that is, that is complicated. OK, so, I mean, there are issues there. But the, the point is that Muslims wouldn't have one view on that, would they? No. And you don't necessarily want the noisiest or the most offended people to dictate what's published? Or, or, or is that not where you end up? No, absolutely. And I think the thing is, is that we have to remember that YA publishing is particularly sensitive. Just as young adult publishing. Yes, which is, which um, is, yeah. is particularly sensitive um, um, because the issues are front-loaded. You know, this is, this is about reading for the next generation. So we absolutely have to get this right. We have to get this reading right. We have to get yeah. the writing right. And so, therefore, we have to listen to the voices that are coming through and, and complaining. And actually, we we have to think who is writing our stories right, and who right. who are our children going to be listening to. So, Laura, I mean, is there, is there a problem that, I mean, forget sensitivity readers, but is the problem basically that too many publishers and too many writers are just scared of offending people? Um, well, I think that's very much the case right now. I think there's an idea that, that you can possibly hire enough sensitivity readers where no one will be offended. And that's, of course, impossible. As with my book, they, you know, I had my readers and then the publishing house hired more readers and still people were incredibly offended. As you say, there are different sensitive sensitivities even within marginalized communities. So you're never going to please everyone. You're never going to make everyone happy. And I think the focus needs to be on authenticity. Now, I would disagree, and I think that we can. Well, I agree I would like to see more diversity in publishing and more diversity in writers. I don't think that there should be such strict limits on who can tell what stories. I think that we can imagine each other's lives. I mean, my first novel was about a girl growing up on welfare, and she was white, and no one ever asked me anything right. about it. Let me give a last word to, to Charmaine. So, I mean, do you have any worries about this being a sort of shutting down rather than opening yeah. up literature? Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, as I said earlier, what we really want to see is diversity in publishing. Exactly. What we really want to see is diversity in terms of um, in terms of characters, and we want to see confidence from the writers. Right. But it has to be fair, and it has to be pronounced, and we need we need to have that in order for the next generation. Charmaine, Laura, thank you both very much indeed.